Hello, everyone. Uh, we are very lucky today to have with us uh, Julien Cheng uh, and Jean-Christophe Roger, who both have worked on uh, many uh, beautiful animation projects uh, over the year. Julien is a, an animator, director, uh, and producer who works on films such as uh, Tits of the Movie, uh, The Rabbit's Cat, um, and the first Ernest and Celestine. Uh, Jean-Christophe um, is a screenwriter and director who works on uh, projects such as um, uh, Allez Raconte, um, The Movies on the Riviera, um, DuckTales, The Movie, and also, I have to mention this one, even if it was a long time ago, uh, Les Mondes Engloutis, which I think has been uh, called uh, Spartacus and the Sun Beneath the Sea, am I correct? Uh, just because I, I used to love Arcana as a kid, so I was uh, really pleased to see that. <laughs> Uh, but today, uh, you are here to talk uh, about uh, Ernest and Celestine in Gibericia, which is inspired, inspired by the book of uh, Gabri by Gabriel uh, Vincent. Uh, um, and uh, so you co-directed it. First of all, hello to and thank you for to both of you for being here. Uh, could you, uh, first of all, to tell us a bit more about the story of the film and uh, why you decided to make a uh, sequel to Ernest and Celestine? Okay, uh, so um, the idea of producing uh, another Ernest and Celestine movie uh, was in the head of our producer, Didier Brunner, uh, since the first film was released, but he didn't find the correct storyline to or the team to really get it going. And when we worked together with Julien on the TV series Ernest and Celestine, the collection, that's when he proposed us to work on it. Uh, so in this film, we go back to the origin, the past of Ernest, which is uh, completely unknown. And uh, Ernest is uh, an immigrant. And uh, Ernest, who wanted to be uh, a musician instead of becoming a judge, fled his country to escape the law of it, of it like that and not otherwise. And because of his broken violin, he will have to go back to this country and confront his father and the consequences of his choices. And he's going to have to solve all of this. And uh, this is the story. And uh, for us, the theme of the film is uh, that it's up to everyone to write the scripts of his own life. OK. And so you co-directed the film. Um, or, or did you work together at, as co-director? Did you? Uh um worked on different parts of the creating process or did you make every decisions together maybe yeah i just wanted to add it's a completely original story so it's yeah. not based on a specific book by gabriel vincent and the script was written by uh, guillaume motalan and uh, sebastian orsel mm -hmm. uh, and so yeah with jean christophe we used to work together so the way it works is is that we we basically uh, have uh, these uh, all the decisions, creative decisions about the film, we we took together, and uh, and then we splitted the work um, among ourselves. Like uh, for the rough storyboard of the film, the first pass of storyboard, we basically splitted the film in two halves, and we each of of us was storyboarding. Uh, uh, the first half for Jean-Christophe, the second half for me, and then we put together the whole piece, and then we worked closely on every scenes and sequences together. Yeah. And we like to have all of this um, creativity uh, decisions um, really together, and uh, and uh, and for then the specific aspects of. Uh, you know, handling the background department or the animation department. One of us was in charge more than the other, but then we just shared the the work and and decided together all the way through. Okay. Uh, and this question leads me to the next one. Could you tell us a bit more about the uh, the process to make this film, uh, the different steps, and if there is a favorite part of yours uh, of the creative side? Uh, make the film happen. Maybe Jean-Christophe, you want to start? And, uh... Yeah, as Julien explained, the um, first part of the work is to uh, draw a rough storyboard to do the animatic of the film. It's just like the complete uh, architecture of the film. So it took us one year 
six months, we just focused on rough animatic together. And then we started to work with the musician, with the composer, with uh, actors to add voices to, and we added new other storyboarders, an editor. And uh, we worked until we have the whole rough uh, structure of the film. It took, it took about one year, and I think it's the most creative uh, moment where you you change the script, you add the new sequences, new scenes. It's just like you, you really create the film, and um, composer as well, and actors as well. It's really... And after there is a long, uh, more one year or a little bit more, when all the background and the animation is done. So this is a very long uh, process and it needs a lot of people, lots of uh, people for the, the animation, the background. And at the end, we had, we have all the post-production, you know, the editing, compositing and uh, mix and uh, yeah, all this uh, part. So the end is very, is wonderful because that's when you see the film. But the, the real moment where you create the film, it's the first moment where you you work on, a, we worked on the rough storyboard. Mm -hmm. Are they uh, roughly how many people work on the entire film? Because we don't always realize how many people we need to make animation films. Yeah, it took uh, almost 150 people to work on every aspect of the movie. And, you know, some people are very dedicated to uh, the animation of the characters and others are for the backgrounds and the color. And so, yeah, it, it's like a long shooting of a film over one year and a half, as Jean-Christophe said. And you have to maintain a good uh, mood within the team because it's a marathon, mm -hmm. but it was a great experience. Yeah. And so what uh, do you have a favorite uh part of the process yeah i think like jean christophe said the first part of uh, you know uh, crafting this rough story world is very important very creative and then at every steps along the way you add a little more uh, depth you know uh, in terms of details for the animations for instance and it gives very a lot of uh, subtleties and and to the rough storyboard that we did. So it's kind of magical to see um, every step of the way, the film getting better and better. Uh, but the first structure is very important. And my favorite, I would say too. Okay. Um, so it's an undrawn uh, film. It's beautiful, gentle, and also a bit nostalgic uh, illustration as opposed to CGI, which is a computer generated imagery, which is getting more and more common nowadays. Uh, could you tell us more about that choice and uh, whether it's a harder or easier uh, project to take on board? Uh, yeah, the, uh, it's true. We did uh, the first series that we directed together was in CG with a 2D rendering. Mm -hmm. So we used to CG. And when we started on the film, it it was open, like we could have made the film in CG actually, but we really decided to go for hand-drawn animation because we love it. And uh, and it's, it's easier because you have less steps in terms of rendering and, 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 and uh, crafting the, the skeletons of the characters in CG. Uh, so it's less uh, steps, but it's also more difficult in terms of control because you have to draw every drawing of an animation. So it, it takes more effort for us, at least at every stage, uh, where in CG, we could just receive some shots and just give some, you know, basic um, yeah. feedbacks. But then here we had to redraw all the retakes and, and mm. draw those. The film has different layers of understandings. Uh, it tackles some serious subjects uh, such as um, censorship, freedom of speech and immigration as well. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about this and if it's uh, difficult to to address this subject when making a film for young audiences? Yeah, it's, you know, it's very close to the spirit of uh, the author, Gabriel Vincent, mm -hmm. who really speaks about all aspects of life 
uh, to, for the children. She, <clears throat> she considers children as full-edged people, future adults. So she j just speaks about any important things of life in a certain way so that uh, everybody can understand. Uh, so we... Um, uh, one of the main difficulties for us was to set the story and to be able to speak about re <clears throat> relatively uh, mature subjects with children. So, yeah, the uh, return of uh, Ernest to his own country, the ban of music, uh, the autocracy, the family conflict. And uh, so we have filled the movie with uh, wild chases, narrow escapes, full-fledged musical resistance comedy so uh, that uh, the children understand the main lines of the story without uh, getting uh, uh, losing the the main line the the, the threat over the years uh, are there other animations or art form that uh, have inspired you as in uh, have you been inspired by and maybe as a change of style uh, by other artists or art forms I think yeah when we when for for me when I started animation I was inspired by Japanese animation like Ghibli movies uh Takahata movies but I, I grew up watching Disney movies so I would say in France we used to having the, both of this culture visually in terms of animation but at, as the years go by I tend to be more influenced by uh, also live action films and documentaries um, and less animation, I would say. And for the live action and documentary, is it for the content or the visual? For the for the for the creativity in the staging and the directing, and also the the subtleties of the acting that are not planned, and uh, and also the imagery. Sometimes you know you have beautiful scenery in documentaries, even more than in fiction. So it's very interesting to me to go broad on the inspiration so that uh, our animation is, is you know, filled with these different aspects and, and influences. Yeah. yeah. And what about you, jean Christophe? Well, in fact, I'm, continu I'm continuously watching things uh, discovering uh, artists, uh, musicians, uh, filmmakers, new series. Uh, I think I, I feel I have to learn all the time. I try to, I feel, uh, yeah, I, I, I need to learn, to take inspiration, to watch new things. And there are lots of amazing uh, films and uh, artists. So I think it's a continuous process. It's not like I've been I have been influenced in the past by this. I'm continuously uh, watching and learning and taking uh, finding the right way to to do this kind of project to work on this type of project and to add the right thing. Okay. Um. So my uh, final and also very important question that I'm sure young audiences uh, would be very keen to know. Do you have a favorite between Ernest and Celestine? Ah, <laughs> yeah, the, for me, it's definitely Celestine, which I'm feeling more close to. Yeah. In what sense? Because she's, um, she's not afraid of anything. She's very naive, but still has a lot of heart and goes for a head of danger or, or, or what is forbidden and want to change the world. Mm -hmm. And so she has a very, um, this determination, I really, uh, I'm very compelled to, yeah. Okay. And you, know Christophe, your favorite? Yeah. Yeah. Celestine is, for me, it's like a model. She's a, a total hero. She's uh, incredible. She loves his friend. Anything can happen. She's, uh, uh, she believes in uh, Ernest and the others and the people and she, but in a way, I am also a lot like Ernest, so that it's it's sometimes hard to move on. <laughs> so I am a little. I feel I'm a little bit like Ernest, but my model is really definitely Celestine too. Okay, well, thank you so much for answering uh, my questions, and uh, I hope the audience will enjoy your movie. But I don't doubt that because it's very beautiful. Thank you.
Thank Thank you very much. much.